Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with another hill tutorial for you and in this hill tutorial what we're looking at is we're looking at using cork bark to make realistic rocks in our hills. Uh, now this is a continuation of our sort of rocky hills sort of playlist and I'm going to keep continuing it. But let's jump onto this, eh? Right, what's this? What's this log I've got in front of me? Right, this is cork bark. Okay, there you go. And it is the bark of the cork tree, which grows in Portugal. And I think it can be harvested off the tree. I think it's either every eight years or every 11 years. But it's the only tree where you can harvest the bark and it will grow back, which is really cool. Yeah, but it is a limited resource, our cork is. Right, so this is obviously, you know, a big chunk of bark, <laughs> obviously. Now, bark's been used as a modelling material for donkey's ages. I mean, they actually sell it in smaller pieces. There's a manufacturer in, in the UK that makes railway scenics, okay, called Jarvis, Jarvis Scenics, yeah, and they actually sell, you know, bark for specifically for hill purposes. So, this is nothing new. This has been around for donkey's ages, but it sort of slips under the, under the radar with a lot of war gamers, so I wanted to bring it up. Now, when you buy off Jarvis, you, you pay a few quid for a smaller piece. The best places to get this sort of stuff is from vivarium suppliers because it's often used in tanks that have lizards, snakes, spiders, all those sort of things. So that's where you really want to be looking for this sort of stuff. And a piece like this, it's going to knock you back about, I'd say about six, seven pound. Okay, and out of this, you should be able to get at least... You know, three or four really good hills. Probably more if you do smaller, but you know me, I like big hills. Yeah, but, you know, bang for buck, it's well worth it. Now, quick sort of heads up. If you do get it second hand, yeah, what do you, it needs disinfecting. Which means, ideally, you need to clean it up, you need to stick it in a solution of something like 50% uh, water, I'd say, and then 25% PVA, 25% uh, disinfectant, such as, oh, like Dettol or something like that, or something that's a, a medical disinfectant. It will smell for a little while, you're going to have to leave it, let the fumes go off it, or you're going to have smelly terrain, but, yeah, it's an organic... It, this is organic and if it's been in a, a tank with animals and that sort of stuff God knows what's in it yeah so you'll need to disinfect it now the other thing is that this is a sort of an important sort of safety announcement and you know you know when I make safety announcements yeah if I make a safety announcement yeah it's a proper safety announcement now you get various things growing on cork bark okay and they need cleaning off yeah so if I come up let me bring it now let's take a you've got Let's have a look. I've just got to try and find it. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, guys. Right, that stuff, that's lichen. Yeah, lichen, lichen. Yeah, on top of that, you've got more plant growth here. Now, obviously, these all have to be, you know, removed, taken off, etc. But what I really want to bring your attention to is this white stuff here. Now, I'm not even going to put my finger too close to it. Yeah, that is, that's a mold, fungus spores. Okay. Now, the thing about fungus spores is they can dry out for years, but when they get wet and somewhere warm, they can reactivate and start to grow again. And what I mean by this is, yeah, if you were to dust this, sand it, cut it, and these got into your lungs, they would be quite happy growing in your lungs. And if you think you've got issues with MDF dust, this stuff will hospitalise you and put you in like rare tropical diseases wards. You see, I'm even going to wash my fingers afterwards. I hate it. Okay, so you need to be aware of it, yeah? You need to be aware of what's on this. Don't respect cork, yeah? Because there's, it, it's great substance, you know? The stuff that you buy from Jarvis, it's already been disinfected and cleaned and all that sort of stuff. But if you're buying it from, like, secondhand or buying it from Vivarian suppliers, yeah? They don't clean this stuff off, so you need to. Yeah, so be aware of that. Yeah, that speckled white sort of effect. Yeah, basically give it a, a good clean. And if you notice, yeah, if I bring it round, yeah, I should have done this side. Right, let's have a look right straight off. You can see these bushes here, yeah? Yeah, and if I bring it around there, you can see all that mould all around there. Yeah, so just be aware of it, guys. Now, you don't want this in, in your lungs, so you need to clean it outside, obviously. On top of that, yeah, any cutting, sanding, any you know, anything that generates an amount of dust, 
yeah, you need to wear your dust mask. You need to do it outside. This is not one of those, I've got plenty of ventilation in, in my room, around me, in my studio, yeah? The biggest lie in wargaming that is. No, we haven't. This stuff, you cut outside. End of. Yeah, you stand upwind from it and you wear a mask. Okay? That's my safety warning. And if I'm saying this and you know how I am, you know, I'm a bit... You know what I'm like. So if I've got to say that, respect it. Now, when it comes to cutting this sort of sort of stuff uh, the cork bark itself is pretty soft if, it, if you look at it there's two sorts of bark yeah you've got the light yellow bark which is typical cork that's the stuff they grind up and and compress to make cork tiles and and what you're corks in bottles etc now it's very porous I mean cork itself is excellent at resisting water but the cork bark is actually designed to sort of soak it up because at the end of the day it's the bark is the method by which a tree takes moisture from the ground and its roots up to its leaves yeah so be aware that it will need sealing and that sort of stuff before you paint it yeah I when I do it typically after I've cleaned it disinfected it if I haven't needed to disinfect it yeah then what you call it i typically seal it at the same time i'm sealing all my gravel i just coat coat this as well but yeah typically if the second hand they need cleaning they need sealing you know i'll, I'll do it then because i'll be doing it with the disinfectant yeah now when it comes to the bark yeah you've got two sorts of bark you've got the cork bark which is nice and soft and then you've got this harder bark at the back now, that's okay it's the mold stuff i'm not really worried about yeah and this is tough as hell. This really is hard. Okay. And what that means is, let's see if I can you see if I come round here, yeah, this sort of stuff, I can break off with my fingers. Yeah, it just breaks off. Yeah, but this stuff is really tough. So you need to look at what sort of cork you've got. And you can definitely see the, the sort of line where you know the tougher bark is. Now, yeah. With that in mind, you're going to need power tools to, to work with this. Yeah, you can use normal saws and that sort of stuff, yeah. It's a lot of work, I'll be honest with you. Power tools, power sanders is the way to go. Yeah, outside, upwind, yeah, with a dust mask. <laughs> now, once you've done all that, you've taken it out, you've cleaned it. When it comes to cleaning it, typically I use one of these. Yeah, it's a barbecue cleaner, a wire brush, and it's just a matter of getting in there and scrubbing all the lichen off and everything like that. Then what I do is I cut it into slivers, yeah, two inch slivers. Okay, typically because I'm working with two inch foam and I want to get that sort of, it, I want to match the foam height. Yeah, I also do straight cuts and then I'll do beveled cuts. Okay, and beveled cuts, they give me little lumps and they also give me little wedges that I can use to taper hills. So once it's all been cut and etc, it comes back and it looks pretty much like this. Oh, this is a cleaned up piece. Yeah, and you can see where I've snapped bits off. Yeah, and I've given it a scrub and everything. This hasn't been what you call it disinfected yet because there's no real mold on it. And I'm, you know, I'll put a little bit in with my PVA. Trust me. <laughs> but it'll get sealed, etc. But this is a, a, a cut bit. And if I just do this, once it's sort of broken down, you can see, you know, you can break it down, you know, further. You know, to make smaller pieces. You know, the cork is relatively easy. You know, it's the big bits that pose a cha challenge. This black bit. Yeah. So there you have it. There's. I'm not. Can I? No, I'm not even going to try because wasting video time. But anyway, that's what it looks like cleaned up. Now, obviously, you're not here just to see it all cleaned up. You're here to see it in a hill. So let's head over to the kitchen table. And I'll show you how to use this stuff to to make some terrain. Eh? Right. Let's crack on. Okay guys, all these pieces have been cut now and as you can see I've cut a couple of long strips yeah, and I've cut a couple of wedges yeah, for the sides. Now I'm going to have a play around, decide which I'm going to use etc. It's important to note that cork really soaks up what you call it, moisture yeah, and so it really needs sealing before it's painted. Now. I'm actually planning on covering the entire hill with what should I, grit and gravel etc and then sealing that so I'll be sealing the court right then. If you're not planning on sealing your gravel, okay, then consider what should I, giving these a good spray down with what should I, with a 50-50 mix of water and PVA. Yeah, just to seal them because if you don't, when it comes to the painting stage, they're just going to soak paint and you will have to put layer upon layer on. 
Yeah, so like I say, I'm going to seal it when I put the grit and gravel on. If you're not going to seal it, if you're not doing that method and you just want to whack these on and paint them, you need to seal them first, so give them a good spray of water down PVA. So, look at the pieces. That one needs breaking up, not really much for that one, but this is a nice piece. Yeah, see the rock texture? You can already see it. Yeah, so if we put that there, start having a look at these pieces. So, we could put that there, but there's quite a large gap there, isn't there? Yeah, that one could easily go there. I could possibly, no, that's not going to go. Right, I like that as a general layout. Yeah, but obviously we've got this issue here. Now, luckily, it's cork, and like I said, in the thin bits, you can break it down. So, just break it off. Yeah, same over here, that's a bit of a wedge, so let's break that off. You may have to revert to, to resort to tools. Yeah, and these little bits you're breaking off, save them, okay? Because what we'll do is once we've got our basic rocks lined up, if there's any big gaps, we can use bits like this and wedge them in, yeah, to fill the gaps. So don't throw these away, yeah, they're just as useful. Yeah, and you can even take it as far down as actually using these on bases, okay? Cork's brilliant for stuff like that. So very quickly, yeah, that, let me get that in shot. So that's quite, let me just mm, break that bit off. Don't need it. Yeah, and then we'll bring that bit round there, I reckon. Could do with shaving that down a bit. Very quickly. That's better. Yeah, so there we have it. There's our rock surface. Now let me just move that round so you can see it nice and clear. Okay. And that's what our hill's going to go, that's going to be the sort of cutaway of the hill. Next thing we need to do is to get our actual foam. Okay, so I've got expanded, expanded polystyrene here. This is uh, insulation board from a company called Spaceboard Eco in the UK, if anyone's interested. I only mention that because every time I do a video with polystyrene, yeah, someone always watch it goes, where'd you get your foam from? So yeah, I get it from Watcher Wix's, it's called Spaceboard Eco. And what I'm doing is, I'm just lining these up at the very edge. Okay, because I want to sort of save as much foam as possible. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Yeah, so if I bring that round to there, that's nice enough, isn't it? And then I need something to mark it with. So, yeah, that'll do. And just very quickly, yeah, red pen, in fact, it round. You can see that, can't you? I'm slowly getting used to this camera, guys. Yeah, spin this round like that. Yeah, brings down there. Right. I reckon that should do us for a hill. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah, maybe a bit. Maybe move it up a bit to be truthful, get a bit more polystyrene over this side. So swing that round to there. Yeah, that's a bit better. Right, so next job is I need to cut this block out. And at the same time, what I'm going to do is as soon as I've cut this out, I'm also going to draw a, a base on my Watchworks 6 mil MDF here. Yeah, and I'll cut that as, out as well. And obviously it's messy work, so I'm going to do it outside. So we'll come back once these bits are cut, yeah? See you in a sec, guys. It's freezing out there, but Cut myself a nice big base. Look at the size of that. That's got to be a good, what, 16, maybe 17 inches long. Yeah, I've cut out my pink polystyrene. Yeah. Now it's time to start gluing things down. Now, I'm not going to glue the polystyrene down, but I am going to glue the cork down, the cork bark. Uh, what I'm going to use for this is, what's what, hot glue. Yeah, now you could use PVA. It would just take forever to dry. Yeah, and also, unless your cuts are really straight, you end up with some gaps. And those gaps can be with PVA, yeah, unless you've got a really good join, it's not going to stick. So, stick with the watch glue, stick with the hot glue. So, very quickly, work out where my pieces are going to go. Yeah, roughly there, do you reckon? Does that look good to you? What do you reckon? Yeah? I'll put them there. Right, so, get my hot glue. And that's hot, that's really hot. Okay, put one piece there, get this piece. Yeah, and I'm just literally just putting blobs down. Yeah, as long as it's stuck, you're good. 
yeah put that piece there give it a little wiggle to make sure it goes down right okay and then finally we'll do this piece here I'm really wedge that in because I want to make sure I get that join a bit where we we rip those pieces off yeah so they're all stuck down now probably could have brought them a bit closer to the edge to be truthful because that's quite a wide gap but we'll fill it don't worry see that's me concentrating on doing the tutorial not concentrating on what I'm doing right guys the next job I've got to do is I've got to sort of cut this out yeah and bevel this off so first thing we're going to do is get a marker yeah, and just draw a line along it along here because this will tell me where my sort of top edge is that's hot of course it's hot. It's hot glue, both. Yeah, so there you are, that should do it. And I'm going to cut it out using my watch hot wire cutter. Yeah, and you, know, you literally can just start off, start taking chunks off. In fact, that's a really pathetic chunk. I don't even know why I did that. Yeah, just to show you, I've got a hot wire cutter. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on. And basically, I'm going to cut this down and leave a, a sloped wedge. Yeah, so I'll crack on with that. And I'll come back to you once it's done. So as you can see by all the little strips, yeah, I've beveled all this down. And it's just a simple matter of getting your hot wire cutter and just going in layers and slowly working it down. And if I spin it around to the front, you'll see that, what you call it, it's almost perfectly lined up. It's just sticking out a bit. Okay, and what I'm going to do after I've glued this down is quickly sand it and smooth it all off. So we'll get those perfect then. So, need to stick this down now, yeah? And I want to stick this down before I sand it, yeah, in this case, because I want to be able to sand and get it perfectly level with these points here so I can blend it in. So, yeah, once again, hot glue. Yeah, now I'm hot gluing with polystyrene, so watch the fumes, guys. Yeah, also let it cool down a little bit. Sometimes if it's too hot, it can watch call it. It can melt the polystyrene that much that there's nothing left to stick to. So I'll quickly push that down. Now you can do this bit with PVA. The only reason I'm not doing it with PVA is time. Yeah, I've got a hot glue gun here. I might as well use it. Yeah, and so I can see I need to clean that bit up a bit more. And that's in place so very quickly. Dig that out a bit. And we'll blend all that in when we come to sanding. Right, guys, next thing we're going to do is get some sandpaper. So here we are. Let's go do this. On a sanding block. And then it's just a matter of coming along with your sandpaper. Yeah. Oh, God, everything's shaking. And smoothing everything off. And all I'm trying to do is make sure that I get these bits level. Okay, and get rid of all the sort of strong ridge lines. Okay, now this is going to shake the table to crazy, so I'm going to crack on with this and we'll come back once it's all sanded, guys. Okay, guys, as you can see, that's all sanded down smooth now, and if I spin it round, you see it's got a nice natural sort of slope to it. Okay, now there are a couple of little places, yeah, there's a few gaps along here, and there's this wedge here. Now, remember those little bits I told you about? Yeah, what do you reckon? Not there, not there, possibly there, that'll do. Yeah, that's what the little bits are for. Yeah, a bit more in there actually. And then, go on, stick. There you go. There we go. So that's that bit done. Now with regards to these gaps, okay, you, you're never going to be able to perfectly meet up the polystyrene with cork. Cork is an organic watch cut material. That it's, it's very uneven, yeah? So get it as close as you can. And then with your slivers, yeah, what you can do is you can break slivers off. Yeah, get your PVA. And this I am using PVA for because it's actually better. Yeah, and just squirt it in. And then get your slivers and just wedge them in. Yeah. 
And it is literally as simple as that. Yeah, PVA in the hole, yeah, and then get your sliver and push it in. Yeah, now I'm going to very quickly, do you see that? Yeah, how they the little slivers fill up the gaps. What I'm going to do quickly now is watch clip. I'm going to just going to fill all these gaps in. Yeah, with my slivers, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to the, the next layer. There we go, guys. That's all my slivers in. You can see them all the way around there. Yeah, and that's just filled in all those gaps, which means when I use the filler, yeah, I've not got massive gaps I have to fill. It's all little cracks. So. Next stage is obviously filler, and what I want to do is I want to blend these joins in, I want to blend these joins in, obviously, but also, yeah, if you look here, there's little gaps, because obviously, you, you know, well, I know I can't cut, what you call it, cork perfectly, yeah, there's little gaps I have to fill in around here, and there's only really that one, yeah, but I'll also use filler on that. So, when it comes to filler, obviously, yeah, I use budget stuff, damp cloth, bit of water, yeah, but really, get your hand in, get your stuff, and just rub it in. Now, I'm not trying to create the entire surface with filler. All I'm trying to do is just blend in those sort of lumps, those, these edges, yeah, and seal it all off. So it literally is. Now the first stage, I just want to push it in, get gaps filled. Yeah. If I can get rid of the lip, yeah, this time round, great. If not, more than likely, I'll have to wait till this dries, smooth it a little, and then come back in, yeah, and do another coat. Yeah, but we'll see how we go. Okay guys, that's the fillering done, and as you can see, yeah, what I've done is I've put filler around it, then smoothed it off with, uh, you know, some wet fingers, yeah, and it's just gone really nice and smooth, and it's filled in all those gaps, as you can see, yeah, sort of looking from the viewfinder. Okay, and we, we've done a reasonable job at covering the lips and etc, so I'm quite happy with that. Now, at the front, yeah, we filled these gaps, but very quickly, quick little tip, if you get filler, well on the rocks where you don't want it, yeah? Get something like a cheapo brush, yeah? Wet it, and then just come in afterwards and give it a brush. And what that'll do is it'll dilute the filler and it'll just clean it, basically. Yeah, the, the one problem with filler is it tends to be gloopy, which, in all honesty, isn't a rocky texture. Yeah, so, can you see that? Can you see what I've done there? Yeah, and just literally by, you know, using a quick brush, you can break that texture up. Now, I don't have to worry too much about matching this up, etc., because we're going to be putting rocks and all that sort of debris and all that sort of stuff in front of it anyway. I just needed to cover the big gap. So that's all done. Now I do have to leave it, and I'm going to have to leave it overnight before I can do the next stage. So we'll come back to this tomorrow, and we'll crack on, yeah? So I've left it overnight, okay, and it's all dry now, and as you can see, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, you really start to see the sort of rocky texture of the hill coming out. Yeah, and what I'm sort of trying to achieve with it. Now, there's a couple of little bits that you need to do at this stage, yeah. What you may get is little bits of filler just going over the edge or a couple of blobby bits. At this stage, you can just come along and because it's cork and it's just tiny bits, you can just break them off. Yeah, I've already cleaned a few off, to be truthful. Yeah, so just come along. Another thing you can do is look at sort of unrealistic sticky out bits like these bits here. Yeah, and I can just break these back a bit, make them a little bit more realistic. Mm, is that going to break? I don't think so. Yeah, same over here. That's okay, that's okay. Right, moving forward, yeah, the next stage is to add very, well, to basically texture it up. Okay, and for this, what I'm going to be doing is using various grades of, what you call it? I've got gravel there, grit. medium grit and then fine sand okay and what I'm going to do is build up a texture on this yeah starting with the big stuff then working my way down now the only sort of key important thing about placing this stuff okay is when it comes to building war games terrain especially pieces like this uh, 
you place rocks strategically than randomly. And what I mean by that is, you know, use your rock. Who, who, who was it? Bill. 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 Terrainaholic Bill. Yeah, he's got a saying. He says, terrain building, yeah, it's 50% building and 50% hiding your mistakes. Okay, and it's very much like that. What we're going to do is we're going to use these rocks first just to cover up these gaps, this sloppy bit here. You know, fill these gaps in. Yeah, cover up the transition here. There's, if I remember correctly, you can still see of a bit of a lip just there. Okay, so I'll use rock piles there, a rock pile there as well, just to hide these sort of little giveaway points that it's sort of made, if you know what I mean, and it's not natural. Okay, so when it comes to placing rocks, yeah, use them to hide your sort of imperfections first and then just place your, your other rocks randomly, yeah, and then work through your scatter. Now, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to video me sort of putting the grit on, putting the water, everything else on, because I covered it all in the video when we made this one, and this is the stylized Wargaming Hill. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a montage, yeah, and before we jump into it, I'll throw a link up to the tutorial on how to do this one. I need to fix that. We'll put, uh, pull the tutorial up to how I did this one, yeah, and then all these steps, you know, if you're not sure how to do them, they're all in this video, guys, yeah, so, well, ooh, shut up. what we'll be doing now is very quickly just cracking on with this, yeah, and then we'll come back at the end and I'll show you it finished. To texture the piece, we covered it in a little bit diluted PVA, yeah, and then we put in our large rocks first, followed by our medium rocks, and then covered it over with uh, fine grit and fine sand. That was left for a little while before shaking off and it was then left to dry. Once it was completely dry, it was given a coating of diluted PVA, a roughly 50-50 mix, to give it a nice solid base. And once that was done, it was time to move on to the painting. Now with the painting, I went for my four standard colours, two, two browns, two greys. The whole base piece was given a, a solid base coat of dark brown. The rocks were then highlighted in a mid-grey, we went in with a light grey to highlight the dirt and to smudge the rocks to dirt them up. And then finally, what you call it, there was dry brushing of light grey and a very light beige just to bring the rockiness back into the texture. Once that was all done, it was textured up using our two tone scrubbing technique to give realistic flocking. And then after that, clump foliage was added. So here's the finished piece in all its glory. Uh, there's a couple of bits that are still sort of drying, a couple of bits of clump foliage, but here you go. Okay, and as you can see, yeah, it comes out absolutely beautiful. So realistic and so easy to do. Yeah, I mean, you follow the tutorial through, beyond actually working with the cork, yeah, there's not much different than any other Wargaming Hill, to be perfectly honest. The painting si system was exactly the same as my other rocks, you know that. The idea of the two shades of grey and the two shades of brown. Uh, the key things to remember is that mould, the dust, wear a face mask, do it outside, guys. Remember, if, if it's second hand or, you know, you're not sure, disinfect it. You know, think of your health with this, guys, but beyond that, you know, it's an absolutely awesome technique. And like I say, I mean, look at that for results. Yeah? Uh, well, all there is to say now, guys, is obviously if you like it, if you've liked it, yeah. If you've got any questions, any, uh, any comments, any techniques you want to share, throw them in the comments. Remember, I always answer my comments. Uh, feel free to share this with anyone you think might find it useful and if you've got any feedback on the technical stuff of the vid or any video requests or just want to say thank you yeah there'll be a link coming up in just a little moment yeah for my sort of request vid and feedback vid so you can put that on there in the meantime I'm going to crack on with the rest of this set and I'll see you soon guys you have a cracking one yeah all the best Terra.